As the day wore on, the dark-skinned goddess Iravanum had to leave the world hero unwillingly. Her arms that were embracing the hero fell off slightly. Devi still hesitated to give her the last kiss in her life. I'll see you again in the evening. Is this section going to take four hours? Go happy. Is the world. Knight hesitated and looked back at the world. The world was thrilled with joy as the knight parted like a fake lover with no love inside. Aha, liberation. Thousands of bird species sang that. Buds burst and bloomed on the trees and plants. From somewhere swarms of beetles swarmed around the blossoming flowers and sang sweetly. The flat insects with various colored wings chirped happily on all four sides. In the lower sky he saw gold. One by one the celestial flames dimmed and disappeared. The crescent moon, which had been flying in the sky until now, said, Should we stop? Shall we go? He was listening. The boat was moving slowly in the stream. The sound of the oars pushing the water along with the chorus of birds fell on the ears of Punghuali. She woke up startled. Her eyelids fluttered open like two beautiful blue buds blooming together on a branch. The golden face of the prince appeared in front of him. He was still sleeping. Did you lift or is he still numb to the rush? I do not know. Yet how radiant is his countenance? Beyond, Sendan Amuthan was pushing the oar. Pungujali. Why did you wake up so early? Are you just going to sleep for a little while longer? He said. Punghuali smiled. She didn't just smile at the petals on her face. Her bride was full of jewelry. Punguzali was born and grew up in the forest. Yet never had the song of birds and the song of beetles sounded so sweetly to her ears. That's it. A song in Yuta Yaraga. Said Punghuali. Shall I open my mouth where you are? You sing. Sentine Muthan said. Did you sing in the dark forest at night? I sang for the sake of it. Now you sing. I'd like to sing too. But wouldn't that bother the prince? I don't mind. You two sing together. Aromas Hivarmar said. Punghuali bowed her head in shame. Where is the boat going? asked the prince. To Nagipatanam Sudamani Viharam, said Funguzali. So what I saw and heard last night was not a dream. Is it true? Yes, sir. Here is he who has brought news from their Tamakr. Tell me in detail what the young man said, Amuda. Did he send me to join the Buddha Sangha? When Amuthan was hesitating to answer this, he heard the sound of a horse's footsteps. Bungazali and Santhan Amudan were startled. There was no change in the prince's face. Where is my friend? The warrior of the monkey clan. Asked the prince. After listening he closed his eyes. After a while, the god appeared on a horse. The boat stopped and Vandiyadeva came down from his horse. Nothing special. I came to see if you are safe. There is no more danger said Vandiyathevan. Wizard. Pungazali asked. He had no doubt that there was a prince in this boat. He believed what I told him. Have you seen him? I saw, but I pretended to have seen his devil for fear. I've never seen a liar like you. Don't say lies. Say imaginations. How's the prince? He wakes up in the middle and says two words, then he loses consciousness. That's what this Suram is all about. How much tomorrow? Sometimes it will be even a month. Take it safely to Sudamani Viharam. If the Bhik has treat him, he will be cured in two weeks. Be careful, Punguzali. I am going to entrust the prince to you. If your uncle sees a temple tower somewhere, he will sing Devaram and go to see Swami. Sendan Amuthan said, I won't do such a thing after getting to know you. Even I have lost the desire to do Shiva Kaingarium. He said. Has it diminished because of me? Or because of this woman? Tell me the truth. Sendan Amuthan ignored it and asked, Did you find the horse where I told you? He asked. The horse found me. Isn't this the horse I left you in Tanjore? Yes. 
in the dark it stalked me in the thicket. I learned one thing from my capture with the Arabs, Amuda. It's a sin to make horses run barefooted. They must have iron shields under their hooves. I'm going to have them shielded first in the slaughterhouse I see. Well, well. Let's talk about all that. There is no time. I don't know if I will see you or the prince again. If the prince wakes up again, tell him that I am going to the old room and that I will send a message from there soon. Only then will he be at peace. Van Dye the van turned the horse and took it away. Soon he disappeared from their sight. The boat was passing through the foot of the stream, which was thick with undergrowth on both sides. Golden Dalhambu and Ivory Dalhambu were strewn on both sides. Their fragrance is intoxicating. In some places, Punne trees were growing on the banks of the stream. There were also Kadamba trees in some places. Pearl-colored Punne flowers and saffron-colored Kadamba flowers were strewn on the banks of the stream. It seemed to Punghuali that if there was a path from earth to heaven for the pious, it would be like this. Between now and then, where the village was visible, Sendan Amuthan went and bought milk for the prince and food for Punguzali. Whenever the prince woke up, Punghuali stood a little away. She looked around unable to see him face to face. She used to look at his face when he was unconscious. She was talking about many things with Sinthan. Sometimes the two sang together. When Sinthan Amuthan went to the villages in search of food, Pung Lai used to rub the prince's forehead and bow his head. All that time she was in a state of ecstasy, excitement, and excitement. It felt like she had served him in so many previous births. Thousands of formless memories fluttered in and out of her soul, fluttering the feathers. For a day and a night they sailed across that stream. Pungazalai and Sinthan exchanged glances and teared up from time to time. Pungazalai saw many dreams of pleasure that did not materialize in the dark time. The next day at sunrise, the boat reached Nagapatanam as the world glowed golden. Near Nagaipatanam a branch split off from that stream and went straight to Sudamani Vihara. They took the boat along that branch. They took him to the back of the Buddha Vihara and stopped him. At that time it seemed that something was going wrong in the famous Sudamani Viharam. At the door of the Viharam the noise of the crowd was heard. Pictures were running around. From the boat, the three went down to the shore. Sendan Amuthan left saying that he had gone to the Viharat and was coming to find out what was the cause of the commotion. 